Hey, good morning, you guys. Afternoon, evening, for instance, Amy, I see you there. You're, you're in an afternoon, and then Yvette is in the evening. So thanks for joining us, you guys. And I will have an announcement here in a second. Um, the winds of fate don't always blow in the right direction. Uh, Dan, who is out and about traveling around, uh, let me know. Unfortunately, there is no Wi-Fi where he is. So the best we could have done is uh, a, a cell phone connection. Well, that wasn't going to be too great. So he said, can we just reschedule? So we're going to do that. We just found out. So we have something else that you're going to really like. So don't go away. You're going to still hear from Dan Milner. He released a video. Actually, it's almost his second year anniversary. We want to go through it. Um, it's basically going solo with a single lens. There's a lot of information in there you guys are going to like. So stick around. We're going to go through that and have a discussion about it. And then we'll, you know, we'll catch up with, Tan, uh, with Dan <laughs> when he surfaces. This is, um, you know, hey, the liability of a photojournalistic guy who's traveling who knows where. And he's in a very tiny town in western Maine. Apparently, there's no Wi-Fi in that town, which is kind of amazing. Hey, Tim. Okay, so uh, let's let's go ahead and uh, get started here. So, you know, I want to let you know I'm a photographer and author in Carmel, California. And while you're at it, hit the subscribe button and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new episodes. And this episode is brought to you by our friends at Bay Photo Lab, you know, anything you can do to get printed is a good thing so you've got these various different offers you can save 20 percent on acrylic prints these are cool um, uh, you can also get any of your stuff framed i highly recommend when you get a print made get it framed also it just adds you know that extra touch and then you can always make books and albums 25 percent off Bay Photo will help you. They've been my lab that I've used for decades now. I have all sorts of prints I've made with Bay Photo, different kinds of prints. Uh, the one behind me is one of their prints, and you can get 25% off on any new order. So head on over there after the show. This print behind me is an exposer. That's a photographic print on a frame. Bob Holmes uses them. They're really cool. And they, you know, they just put right on your wall and they float off the wall. It's actually a very, very cool look. Okay, so here's what we're going to do, guys. So it's been a while. Hi, Brandon. It's been a while since I bet you've seen this. We all love Dan. And I really, I really like this film that he made. And um, I'm going to play it and I may periodically either let it go or we'll talk about it at the end depending on... If I feel something needs to be punched up, we'll get into it. If you have questions or comments, be sure to leave them in there, and we'll take those up in a minute. And I think Jared, you must be letting me know that you're not in the that you're. Yeah, you somehow ended up in the green room. Let's get Jared out of the green room there. Remove from green room. There you are, Jared. Can you oh, hear right. me? And okay, I, I can hear you. I don't know how it happened. It wasn't at the beginning of the stream. I just ended up in the digital green room. I know. Uh, yeah, well, you and I were messing around with stuff, so it might have happened then. So Jared's yeah. with us now, and uh, Brandon. Hello from Monterey. Really, you're in Monterey, California. Well, that's like a few miles from here. Is that where you are in Monterey, California? And you might be in Monterey, Mexico. Anyway, yeah, I'm wondering if it's Monterey, Mexico. Yeah, let me know. Um, be really cool if you're right around the corner here. Okay, so you guys, here we go. Without further ado, here's Dan Milner. Oh, sorry, guys. Let's try that again. Yeah, yeah. 
screen. Okay, I'm going to start over. I just didn't them. change screens on Hello, you. Hello, everyone. A funny thing happened on the way home from Albania, which gave me reason to make this film. It's something I've been thinking about for quite a while. Historically, when I did documentary projects, I always carried two bodies and two lenses. Most of the time in my career, that meant a Leica rangefinder, an M4, and an M6 with a 35 f2 and a 50 f2. Pretty basic stuff. These days, however, I shoot Fuji. I still have two bodies, but I now have four lenses, two of which I rarely ever use. They're basically for specific uh, lens-specific projects that I run into from time to time. My trip to Albania was specifically about photography. I knew that I'd be shooting every day, all day long. So my second body, which I'm using to record this film, I loaned to my wife, along with the 35 millimeter or 23 millimeter in Fuji speak. I knew once I loaned it to her, I would never get it back, which meant that I was down to one camera body and two lenses. Now, the second lens I never took out of my backpack over a two week period. I did the entire trip Every single photograph I made, I did with this, which is a 50 millimeter weather sealed F2. It's very small, it's very light, it's very unobtrusive. This is what I wanna talk about today. I bought my first 50 millimeter in 1993, and I had absolutely no idea how to use it. I was a uh, full-time photographer, I was shooting for a major daily newspaper, I had a degree in photojournalism, and I literally had absolutely no idea how to be a photographer. That's pretty par for the course. At the time, there was a huge shift happening in photography, especially in the equipment arena, with Canon ushering in autofocus and also the fixed 2.8 zoom lenses. So lenses like the 20 to 35 and the 70 to 200 2.8, those had become the absolute norm staple for every newspaper photographer I knew, for the most part. There were some rare birds out there shooting Leica, shooting fixed lenses, but for the most part, everybody had transitioned to zooms, including me. However, for some unknown reason, I bought a Canon 50 millimeter 1.4, which was a complete piece of garbage. Within a matter of weeks, I could take the lens and I could shake it and it would go clack, 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 because the elements inside were coming apart. It was garbage, but more importantly is I didn't know how to use it. I didn't know how to frame with it. I didn't know how to use the aperture on a 50. And the other thing you have to realize is when you do photography long enough, you have this ability, you gain the ability to anticipate images that will happen based on the environment that you're in. And you have to be in sync. You have to be in tune. I didn't know how to use the 50, so I sold it. A couple months goes by. For whatever reason, I bought a second one and I sold it. And then a couple of months went by or maybe a year goes by. I bought a third one and I sold it. I never committed to the 50 and I didn't know how to use it until... I bought a Leica M6 and a 50 millimeter F2, and I don't remember how I got it or why I got it, but I started to commit to that combination, and I would leave everything else at home, and I would only use that camera and lens combo. And I have to say, that changed my life. It probably is the most significant gear decision I've made in my entire life, and it translates onto today. So the entire time in Albania, I never once had to think about my equipment. I never once had to think about lens choice. So there's three reasons, and I conveniently wrote them down. Three reasons why I think this is so important. And the number one thing, which is, these are not in any kind of hierarchical order, but the number one thing is, you don't, when you're carrying a single body and a single lens, you don't look like a photographer. And the days of being a photographer and having that work to your benefit are numbered. You know, it's harder and harder to do documentary work these days. People are suspicious. They see a professional level camera and they say, okay, you get away. Meanwhile, the 50 people next to them who are recording in 4K on their iPhones, those people are okay. But cameras, for whatever reason now, uh, signify people get nervous. So this happened in a museum where we came, I walked in with a camera and they said, oh, no, no, you can't use that in here. Well, there was literally a guy streaming himself live on his iPhone the entire time I was in the museum. So it makes no sense. So number one, single body, single camera makes you look a little bit less uh, like a photographer. Number two, and maybe the most important part is that using a single lens for the entire time provides consistency to the look of the work that you're creating. I don't shoot single images, I shoot stories. So there needs to be a cohesiveness to those stories. And when you're shooting the same lens the entire time, it's very easy to get that consistency. And secondly, that translates over to the design. So when I'm creating my publication from the trip, which is critical to me, I would never, ever, ever go on a trip and spend that much time making pictures and not put it into a publication. 
If you're a photographer who leaves everything in the digital space, in my opinion, you are dropping the ball on the last third of your career. If you're not going to print, you're not coming full circle with the projects that you're doing. Print requires a very specific kind of commitment. It requires editing skills, sequencing skills, designing skills, etc. So not only am I going to do stuff into a magazine, I'm doing it in real time while I'm still in the country. Every day, at the end of the day, I'm editing, sequencing, and laying out the publication that I'm going to make so that when I get home, all I've got to do is hit print and I'm done. And a week later, it shows up on my doorstep and I can start diving in. So using the same lens all the time provides the consistency of the look that I'm after. And the third point is when you only have one lens, you spend all your time shooting and none of your time fumbling. And I bring this up because I've taught workshops, many workshops over the years. And I can't tell you how many students I've had. I've looked over at them in the field and they've got multiple cameras and multiple lenses on those cameras and fanny packs and backpacks and they spend 40% of their time, 50% of their time fumbling with their gear. And it's like what lens and what camera and what combination and what card and I need a speed light and I need multiple speed lights and I need strobes and all this stuff and all the while the world is moving in front of you and you're missing it. So if you ever have a question about whether you need a piece of equipment in the field, you've already answered it. You don't need it. So my recommendation to you is to choose a lens and a single body and a giant stack of batteries and go out in the field until those batteries are dead. Oh, you gotta unmute yourself now. <laughs> Thank you, Jared. <laughs> okay, we got a lot of stuff to unpack from that short little video, and uh, I took some notes here. So first of all, he mentioned that you you need to anticipate the image from your environment, and you know that's what we're talking about all the time in terms of visualization. You are tuned in to the environment, and that actually comes from not even having the camera pressed to your face. But first, walk the environment, look at it, see what the images look like, see see where you know the light is hitting. Get, you know, get, get that all that stuff dialed in your own mind before you start pressing the shutter. That's all part of the visualization process. Remember, Ansel Adams said that's the key. The whole key to a photograph lies very clearly in that visualization. So that's your that's your pre-step here that he mentioned. Um, he said, don't look like a photographer. And, you know, in terms of traveling, that's kind of an interesting point. Um, when you are carrying all sorts of equipment, not only are you burdening yourself with stuff you probably don't need. And he mentioned all that, you know, teaching a workshop, and people showing up with multiple bodies and blah, blah, blah. Pare it down and and keep your self free to photograph and then it is an interesting thing everybody's shooting with an iPhone so you're never like branded as a photographer but keep that in mind why you want a simple setup now number two is really really apropos to what we were going to talk about today he actually condensed in this little section the, the, the whole story of print and he mentioned consistency in your story it's a really important point because, you know, he said, if, well, let's, let's really unpack this whole thing. He says, if you are not going to print, you're missing a third of your life as a photographer. And I fully agree with this. This is why in our AYP Plus class right now, we're having everybody put together their books, their story. And we're going over it in the class. If you're not a member of that class, you guys should be, and Jared will put the link in there. But going towards publication is really important as a photographer because it involves these points. He rattled them off pretty quickly, but you know, it, it involves getting the story set. It involves sequencing, which means what is the sequence of these photographs? Sometimes you switch that around, it really can change the whole flow of the photograph, of the story, rather. Um, but you're, you're aiming towards publication. Now, he's, done, he's doing something I haven't done myself, which is while he's out traveling, he's putting together his, his zine or book. I do that with video sometimes. While I'm traveling, I'm actually putting my video together, you know, which includes 
often most most of the time it'll include still images as well but I haven't done this and I think it's a great idea there is just something very satisfying about holding a book in your hands based on where you've been traveling or the story. Maybe it's a story in your own town. Maybe you didn't travel more than a mile. Um, in our uh, AYP Plus class, we have a whole range of different stories that are going on. Hans, who's on here, hi Hans, and mentioned that he understands the challenges of Wi-Fi. He's documenting his, his extreme running in the mountains and showing us what is it like. I don't know what it's like. I mean, I've backpacked and climbed in mountains, but I've never done the extreme running he's doing. So it, it's showing us, a, it's like giving us a world view, an inside world, of, an inside look into his world is what I'm trying to say. I've got that backwards. So we're getting a window into his world. And that's really important. Um, Hector, who is in Los Angeles, is giving us a, you know, a view of what's going on in L.A. from his camera. Uh, Tony is showing us portraits of barns in the Midwest. Who knew there were so many different barns? Lou is showing us windmills in, in uh, England. They're just fascinating and beautiful to see. So all these stories, Jared in Chicagoland is showing us the world rebooting after COVID. Um, each person has picked their project and they're showing us through a series of photographs how it's unfolding, what's that story, what's the sequencing. And again, <clears throat> Dan's point here is if you're shooting with the same lens, 50 millimeter, um, I, you know, I often shoot with a 35 millimeter. I like a little bit wider, but I think the point is whether you're shooting with one or two, three lenses, whatever, pare it down, simplify, simplify. I don't change lenses very often. And, you know, it does simplify your gear. You don't have to carry a lot of extra stuff. Also, every time you switch lenses, you're opening your camera up to dust on the sensor, which is really annoying. You're going to have to fix it later. Don't do that. Okay, <clears throat> so getting a consistent look in your story with the one single lens, that's really important. The last one is so key you're shooting not fumbling you know you're going to miss shots to the degree that you are not prepared chance favors the prepared mind louis louis pasteur said that ansel adams changed it to chance favors the prepared photographer if you are prepared you're ready you know your equipment you don't have to fumble you're not like uh what lens what uh, anytime you put that there you're going to miss shots so <clears throat> you want a consistent look. And this is the other thing I learned actually as a teenager. I used to experiment all the time and I was trying different equipment, different developing stuff, different papers. And all of a sudden I went, wow, it's, there's too many variables. I can't figure out what's changing. So I just decided I was going to make a standard approach to my photography. It was a really smart idea. And so I photographed with a camera like this Leica back here with a 35 millimeter lens or my Roloflex, which is out of the frame here, but that has a, a fixed lens on it. And that's all I used. And if I needed to zoom, I zoomed with my feet. I didn't own a telephoto. With the Leica, I, owned two, I had two lenses. I had a 50 and a 35 and that was it. So I'm tracking with what Dan is saying here. And what it does is it causes it kind of your, first of all, you know that equipment after you just shoot with it over and over again. You know that equipment really well. It should become, Bob Holmes says, it should become just like an extension of your hand. So instinctive you don't have to think about it. Don't let the camera get in the way of your photography. And too much of what goes on, frankly, too much of what goes on on the internet is about gear, 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 switch, change, add this, do this, new this, now. Nah, forget about it, guys. That's just distracting you from really getting competent with, with you know, a single setup. 
and really get to know that camera so you know what the camera sees. It's not what your eye is seeing. Yeah, you use that to frame and you're, you're using your eye, obviously, to visualize and look at what you're going to photograph. But you have to translate that into what is this camera going to see in this rectangle? Or sometimes it's a square. But what does that camera see within that frame? And also, how does that camera respond? If it's film, you got to know what your, how your film responds. Every kind of film responds a little differently. Ektachrome, for instance, slide film, it comes out with this blue, you know, it has a blue feel to it. Um, Fuji Velvia, you know, is much warmer. You know, those are things you know about your film. But also your camera sensor, every camera is going to respond a little differently in terms of how it captures the light what it does with that you know information in the sensor you've got to know that and that only comes from experience that comes from shooting being very consistent looking if we're talking about digital looking at it on the computer not just in the back of the camera and then going whoa i see where i've blown out my highlights here so i'm going to make sure i adjust that in exposure compensation i don't want to ever lose information in my highlights sometimes i don't care if I lose information in the blacks, generally I don't care about that. And Bob Holmes said, hey, leave that mystery there. You know, that adds an element of mystery to your photograph. But you want to know what your camera is going to do. And the only way you're going to know that is just by being very consistent, using the same gear over and over again. Okay. Dan covered a lot of ground there in six minutes. I mean, that's how he is. He's fast. He covers, <laughs> covers a lot of information. So we'll get him, you know, uh, soon, maybe next week, hopefully, talking about more data about going to print. But I'd, um, you know, love to see if you guys have any questions. Jared, do we have any questions in here that uh, we should take up or we have some comments? Uh, we haven't gotten uh, yet. But one thing uh, I would add as well, because, you know, I edit all the shorts and stuff, so I've been watching uh hector had a question so maybe we yeah. should take that up i'll give Why my not? comment later hector uh, so i'll just put your your comment or question right here viewed this specific video by dan a few months ago great content questions stylistically do i use a couple of single fixed lenses versus as a working photographer use one zoom lens that is a really good question a really good one and I'm going to give you my answer that I feel like most of the pros also follow. I use a zoom lens. Don't judge me. You know, there's this whole thing about, you know, fixed prime lenses. Okay, Dan's talking about it here. I get it. And I do use, sometimes I'll take this lens and put it on my, my Sony. It's a, it's a fixed 50. But listen, for ease of use, for quality of, of the photograph, I use a, a 24 to 70, 95% of the time. And most of the pros I know are the same. Why? Because you have that range of, of focal lengths without changing lenses. And it, for me, it works. Now, if you're in love with prime lenses and you want to make changes, you can do that. I don't recommend it because what I've already said, you're going to be fumbling. You're adding, you're adding time to the process. You're adding complexity of having to pull this lens out, unscrew the cap, put this one in, put this one back in your case. All that time you're not photographing. And you're also leaving your camera open to dust. And that's the most annoying thing to have sensor spots. Hector, whatever you're most comfortable with, go continue with it. But for me, it's... It's using using a zoom. And, there was uh, a time. There was a time back many years ago where zooms were not as sharp as primes, but I believe we passed that a long time ago. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Jerry. Uh, just a little bit of an anecdote on my part. When I was in school, um, we had this conversation a lot when it came to video. You know, should uh -huh, you use sure. prime lenses? And I think that the advice that they gave was was pretty good in the sense that um you know the zoom lenses are pretty close to prime lenses now like you said 
And the main reason that they recommended that we ought to use prime lenses is because when you're changing that focal length, it does change things. And Especially so, important with video, yes. Yeah, and with video, it's, it's definitely more important. But the principle does stay true with sure. uh, photos. So I think the main thing is if you are using a zoom lens, which we do generally, you know, like there's nothing wrong with doing that. But you need to understand when you're changing your focal length what does that change and what do you need to adjust in order to keep that similar style and make sure your photos turn out and that just yeah. comes down to know your camera know your equipment realize yeah. that it's not gonna look the exact same that you need to make adjustments and understand what the camera is seeing when you change your lens length so yeah that was just wanted Dan's, to throw that out. yeah that was dan's second point of the consistency okay so sandish from sri lanka hello <laughs> Could you discuss building confidence with a lens of choice? I love 35 millimeter lenses, but struggle going close with subjects in certain contexts. Uh, okay, so building confidence really comes from you know familiarity, and whatever whatever lens you're using. So I'm not going to tell you you should use a 35 or a 50 or whatever. I'm going to just say whatever lens you are using, whether it is a prime or a zoom. Use it enough so you're really familiar with it. I think your question here is is something different, though. Let's pull that back up. I think what you're actually asking, if I'm not mistaken, um, is getting close to subjects in certain contexts. That's an interesting point, and that's something um, that we can build on. And one of the things... You know, I have a whole different business going here, which is consulting. And one of the courses that I teach is effective communication. You guys may be interested in, in that. And I should probably open those up to you if you are interested. Because communication is what it's all about in photography. And so when you get close to people, what happens? You know, if you're standing way far away with a 200 millimeter lens, you're really removed from your subject. Not so good in a lot of cases, especially if you're taking portraits and you're and you're trying to or you're trying to capture like the feeling of those people. So Cartier Bresson used a, a a Leica like this with a 50, I believe, maybe a 35. I should check. Maybe he used them both, but he would get really close up and photograph his subjects. Now Bob Holmes made a really good point about if you use a wide lens and you get close to your subject, you're getting a feeling of intimacy there. You're, you're not back and removed. You're really right in there with your subject. So Sandish, this is a matter of um, overcoming any shyness maybe. I'm not sure if that's what you're saying. Maybe you're just not, you're not comfortable. You have to just do it enough to to raise that, you know, your your ability to go and get close to people, move in and out. Of course, that's a little more difficult with our COVID world, but I, I think that's what you're saying. So, okay. And you said you can't use close-up telephotos effectively. Okay. Well, then that's when you zoom with your feet. And that's basically, you know, what you want to practice with. Okay, Hans has something here. Uh, let's bring you up here, Hans. For portraits in low light, I would recommend something closer to 1.2. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. I do not own one of those, but I get it. That would be a cool lens to have in, in terms of capturing available light. Absolutely. So all this boils down to really a couple of key points. And again, these Dan mentioned these is the consistency knowing your equipment getting not getting it in the way not letting it it overcome and overpower what you're doing with your photography too much of what i see out there on the internet is about gear gearheading and i've never bought into that and the the pros that i talk to don't buy into it either i mean yeah we we get as excited about gear as much as anybody but at the end of the day, you want to find a setup that's going to work for you, that you're really familiar with, that you're comfortable with, that you can use quickly and get out there and photograph. Because remember, it's about capturing your own images of life. So 
unless there's any other questions, I'm going to wrap things up here. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, do we have any other announcements, Jared? Or is that about uh, it? No. Uh, one thing I did want to bring up, uh, if I remember correctly, in our interview with Vincent Laferre, yes. um, he gives a lot of really good tips on building confidence and how yes, that's right. he did his own confidence. So I would recommend... Uh, checking out his interview, I went and looked it up, so I'll put it in the comments oh, yeah, here good. in a minute. Uh, so that way you can check that out, and maybe that will help give some tips. Uh, and I know that there are other people on our channel who have addressed this, because it is an issue. It's difficult to get up close to people. And so we have several videos um, where different photographers share what worked for them to build that yeah confidence. absolutely and oh uh before i sign off here brandon in monterey will you shoot us an email ayp at silverstudios.com and if any of you guys come into our area monterey area please let me know i'd love to meet with you and and uh find out what you're doing and who knows maybe we got some synergy here okay hector thanks again for joining us you guys and remember to subscribe, enable the bell, so you don't miss, you got to do both on YouTube, so you don't miss any of our videos. We'll let you know when we've got Dan back in range. <laughs> the, the Dan man, you never know where he's going to be, so it's pretty cool. He's out and about constantly looking for stuff, and that, that means you never know what you've got, you know, uh, Wi-Fi wise. So please share the video, like it, leave your comments as always. And remember, you guys say this with me, remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Take care, you guys. If you're on AYP+, Plus, you should be. We'll see you on Tuesday. If not, we'll see you here next Thursday, okay? See you guys soon.